What is he up to now? Wait. Pattern recognition? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Initiate security override. Authorization 15724. Initiate download. Oh, please let this work. <sighs> what just happened? Don't ask. Oh well, no matter. of love. Yes, I'm back. You didn't think I was going to give up that easily, did you? Not a bit of it. So here I am once again for a brand new season, and we're kicking off with another underappreciated DreamWorks movie, Megamind. Released in 2010, Megamind is that rarest of tales, the villain's story. For decades, Megamind has been battling his arch-nemesis Metro Man for the right to protect Metro City. But this time, he might just have the upper hand. Boasting an all-star cast, Megamind was mostly positively received, even if it was joining an increasingly crowded subgenre. So summon your minions, grab your scariest cape, and prepare to do battle as we uncover Megamind. It's a big day in Metro City, as its premier superhero Metro Man is being honoured with his very own museum. But what's this? Roxanne Ritchie is captured! Note Roxanne's cameraman sidekick, one Hal Stewart. The notorious supervillain Megamind hatches his latest escape from prison. And within moments of returning to his evil lair, this calamitously cranial criminal has already set his hostage and baited his trap. Our hero sets out to rescue the damsel and save the day. But this time, Metro Man can't break through the observatory's roof. And when the death ray hits, Metro Man is reduced to a skeleton. Well, it is the villain story. You didn't really expect the hero to win the day, did you? Especially not in the first act. Metro City falls under the spell of Megamind, but the thrill of victory fades all too quickly. All of which makes me wonder if I'd fall into some kind of existential crisis if I ran out of villains to conquer. Nah, I've still got the show! And in the fall of Metro Man, the idea is born to create a new hero. Megamind finds a flake of skin on Metro Man's cape and uses the DNA of his longtime rival to create a bullet, giving the power of Metro Man to one lucky recipient. But Roxanne Ritchie is on Megamind's trail, and in the chaos, a new Titan is born. That is a terrible origin right there. A random encounter leading to a DNA-altering bullet right up the hooter. Thus, Haldrat makes his destiny! And so this Titan is trained in Montage. But Montage is a powerful thing, and it also chronicles the flowering romance between Roxanne and Bernard. Bernard is in fact Megamind, 
who took this disguise after setting explosives to destroy the Metro Man Museum. The real Bernard was the custodian. Also, we learn at this point that Roxanne was never actually romantically interested in Metro Man. Interesting. It certainly seemed from what little we saw of him that the only person that Metro Man truly loved was himself. And so everything is set for the debut of Titan, which predictably means that everything is about to fall apart. Firstly, with the disastrous date of Titan and Roxanne, and then with the unmasking of Bernard. And as if that wasn't enough, Titan wants nothing to do with heroism and decides to be a villain instead. But Megamind won't hear of it, and reveals that he made the bullet that struck Hal, and he was the space dad that trained a Titan, and that he was the geek that was dating Roxanne. And the only thing Titan wants is revenge on Megamind for temporarily winning Roxanne's heart. And freed from the spell of Megamind, Metro City falls under the iron fist of Titan. Roxanne and Megamind head for Metro Man's secret hideout. But shock! Metro Man lives! Long story short, Metro Man got tired of the endless back and forth, faked his own death, and went off to make music instead. Unfortunately, his music isn't very good. Without Metro Man, Roxanne makes one final attempt to connect with Titan. Hal Stewart was the one that was in love with Roxanne. But that was before a disastrous date, and him revealing his identity to her. She rejected him out of panic and confusion. And nobody rejects Titan. So, this reconciliation is doomed to fail. And Cranial Conqueror becomes Azure Avenger. Not that it does him much good. But Double Shock! Metro Man steps in to save the day! Or does he? You'll stay out of Metrocity. You got it! For good! Because Megamind never held to accepted pronunciation of words, which is a dead giveaway to an angry Titan, but there are lessons in defeat, and a timely tip from Roxanne gives a Megamind the weapon to finally finish off Titan. Behold then, a villain's defeat. And so our movie ends with a dance off? Well, whatever works, I suppose. Anyway, that was Megamind. And... Yeah, I'm gonna put this one into the House of Love. This is another vastly underrated movie. It's smart, funny, and easily the equal of any of DreamWorks' powerhouse franchises. And I'd agree that the setup had been done first by Despicable Me, which was released earlier in 2010. But this movie more than stands up on its own. It's not so much superhero smackdown, as a tale of the roles people play. In the modern world, the conventional narrative tells us that this person is good, or this quality in a person makes them bad, or some such. But the truth is, we can be whatever we want to be. The top draw cast all give good performances, and the frustrations of Titan serve to teach us that absolute power corrupts absolutely. And for all the jokes I can make about the murder man sensibilities of Titan, He's supposed to be the villain. It would seem, then, that sometimes, it is good to be bad. I've been Funky Monkey, reminding you that with the training, prayers, and vitamins, you too can be a hero. So long, folks. <laughs>